Okay, so I did went ahead and did the top part of the hat. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to start digging in. We're going to go to each corner and we're going to start bringing this down so it looks round. Now don't forget, this is going to be at an angle, so let's do that first. We go, I, I took my line across this way. We're just going to start trimming this off at the top here. Now I made that really wet. When you use that spray, you want to be very careful when you do that. You don't want to overdo it. Uh, but I'm going to spray it again just a little bit there to get that soaked up a little bit. When you have a harder piece of basswood, you can do that. It just makes life so much easier. It's so much nicer to cut. We're going to come across this way. You can hear <laughs> that it's going across the grain. And that is the toughest part to cut. It's easier to do it along with the grain, like I, I'm doing here. When you do this cross cut, it does make a difference. Okay, so we're going to bring this down a lot more yet. And let's see if I can get another knife that's a little bit sharper. I switch knives all the time. This is a Tom Ellis knife. It's a very nice knife. He makes a good quality knife. He's the one that makes the, the sharpener that I have, as you've seen in some of my other um, videos. highly recommend if you don't have a sharpening machine um, and you've been carving a while. It is, it's not cheap. It costs a little over $200, but uh, it's well worth it. Um, I think it was worth every penny. I priced it out on my own uh, to make it myself and I found that you know, Tom came up with a real good design. By the time I went back and forth to figure it all out, I would have spent at least that, um, you know, to find all the parts and stuff. So he has a nice little um, machine, and it was only right to buy it from him because he, you know, he designed it and made it, and, and he's had a great success with it. So if you're interested, it's Tom Ellis, and uh, he has a very good... Uh, knife sharpening machine. It's not to it's not to regrind everything, you know, reshape the blade. It's more to hone it and to sharpen it and put that final edge on it. Okay, so this is kind of almost the same size all the way going across. We're gonna go ahead and uh, start taking this off. Now remember this is a little bit at an angle so when we do this hat what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off we're going to kind of just make some marks here, give us an idea how far we're going to go in. Okay, maybe a little bit further. And then um, uh, what we're going to do there, we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to bring it in a little bit on either side. But usually I like to do the side view ver first. Um, I always found that that's been always much easier to... When you get have a good profile on a piece, uh, the rest kind of falls into place. Anyway, that's my... Well, I didn't do this side yet. <laughs> oh, I'm lacking here. I didn't do this while I was offline. Um, when I do anything, I, I always like to see that I have a good profile on a piece, okay? Regardless of what kind. And, and I all, always found that your, your carving kind of falls into place with it. If you have a good side view on something, um, you know, or a good front view, I usually do it from the side. Most carvers will. Now this is a little tricky. You're going to have to push in pretty far. And if, and one word of caution. When you do this, do little pieces. You don't have to big, take big hunks out. Okay? You do little pieces that you're comfortable with cutting. And then you don't have to put as much pressure behind it. I know it takes a little more time and a little more patience to do it that way. But it'll save you a host of cuts on your hands or danger, you know, putting too much pressure behind it, you know. And never use your arm for force. Um, you use your thumb or use your leverage like I, I'm doing here, okay? So we're going to work on this hat. This hat's going to be a lot of work. I mean, uh, when I did the Amish guy, I found it was the, most of my work was doing doing the hat and the face. The rest of the body isn't that uh, intricate. You know, but this 
If you don't have the hat right, I think, on a piece, or the helmet not right, or whatever you're putting on as a hat on, on a piece, it can make it uh, look different. So I like to put a little more time into the hat. And there's more to cut, too. You know, it's just not that it's more uh, intricate. It's just more wood that you have to remove. But that's part of the fun of carving. You take a little pieces at a time like I'm doing now. And uh, see, we have it at an angle. That's good. We're going to bring this down. And then we'll work from the sides and do the same thing. We'll try to get that. Okay. And then we'll worry about rounding it and doing all that. But we're, we're just going in from the sides now. We're just going to cut it in. A little bit at a time. And once you get this kind of rounded, we're going to try to round this up a little bit. You know, I'm going to try to give me an idea of, of how rounded it should be. Because those Canadian Mountie hats are similar to our, our Smokey the Bear hat down here. Um, our state police in Pennsylvania have that Smokey the Bear hat as well. So but it's rounded so we're going to try to get it rounded on the top here but meanwhile we're going to come down here we're going to keep cutting this out because eventually all the si these sides and stuff will meet and they'll have to come down as well all right and notice how i'm controlling this blade with just the leverage of holding my knife and pivoting it on my thumb and letting that cut through there Okay, good. And one other thing I often do when I do a project, I, I go on to Google and I Google Mounties or, you know, Canadian Mounties and they get me an idea of, uh, they give me an idea of what they should look like and what the hat should look like, you know, and, and I use that for reference a lot of times. So, then that's what I recommend for people to do, you know. If you're not 100% sure, then you go to uh, someplace like Google or Bing or whichever browser or search engine you use. If you use a, you know, if you use that for reference, and I find you get a lot of good information that way by going on to a site like that. Especially if it's a new project, I don't care what you're looking up. Just put in. Canadian Mounties images and you'll see images of it and you click on that link and it will give you a bunch of pictures, thousands of pictures of whatever one you're looking for. You know, whatever you're looking for. We're going to start rounding this up a little further. This is going to be a lot smaller because this is uh, definitely going to be too wide. So we're just going to keep them you know, working around it. Because remember, this portion has to be oval. So a lot of this has to come off yet. That's, this has to be a lot thinner, a lot smaller, and then we can start rounding this off. But I will